Happy Thursday. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Tolosa patio and terrace. You're joining us for Technical Thursday. Um, you see we have some wine in front of us. We invite you to do the same. We have our 1772 Tolosa Rosé 2019 Vintage. Um, today I have a very special guest. I have Tolosa's estate manager, <laughs> Jenny Medina. Hi, everybody. <laughs> And uh, we're going to be covering some exciting news for you today. We're going to be giving you some updates on the reopening of the Tolosa tasting room. And so if you're new to following Tolosa, I'm going to give you a little background information on where we're located. We're located in San Luis Obispo in the Edna Valley. We're located about four miles from downtown San Luis Obispo, right across from the airport. And uh, we specialize in Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, and that is because we are a cooler coastal valley located just off the Pacific Ocean. We have a great transverse valley here, which pulls in that coastal influence as well. So um, if you're just tuning in, we're going to be covering the uh, announcement of the tasting room we're opening. We're going to be covering those details um, today. And so I have, again, a close to the state manager, Jenny Medina. And Jenny, I'm sure our viewers or followers would like to know a little bit about you. So why don't you start okay. off by telling us about yourself? All right. Well, um, my name's Jenny. <laughs> I uh, am the estate manager here at Tolosa. I've been with Tolosa for about three and a half years, um, but I've been in the wine industry for about seven. Um, I grew up just down the road um, in Arroyo Grande. So uh, working in the Edna Valley is kind of a dream come true. So what is it about the wine industry that you particularly love working in? Um, well, the free wine helps. <laughs> um, <laughs> but really just building those relationships with um, not only the team that I work with, but the guests that I get to meet on a daily basis. Um, I've made some of my best friends in the world um, by meeting them here at the winery. Fantastic. And you just mentioned a little bit about your team um, mm -hmm. in the tasting room. Um, as a state manager, um, can you tell us a little bit about the, um, the folks you have working in the tasting room, their mm -hmm. roles, maybe about how many people yeah. work in the tasting room, and then talk us through a little bit of what your job responsibilities are okay. as well. Um, so my team size ranges depending on the time of year. Um, it can be, you know, as small as 12 to as large as 25 in all kind of aspects of of all the different roles um there are the estate hosts that you all see every time you come here that um, pour the wine and they're the kind of the wine educators if you will um, i also have a team of barbacks who they tend to be the the all-encompassing role. Um, not only they, do they ensure that the glasses are polished and, and the winery is stocked, um, but they assist in whatever way we need um, throughout the day. Um, so you might see them up front as a host or even pouring you wine sometimes. Um, we then have our greeters out front who you all meet when you're here on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. Um, that role will probably expand a bit um, <laughs> in the new way of doing things. Um, but those ladies are the ones that kind of, uh, make the table arrangements and set out who's taking care of who and, and ensure that we have all the proper tables available. Um, and then we have our concierge team, which they're the ones that answer the phones and make the reservations and give you all the information, um, that you need when making an appointment with us. Awesome. And then for myself, um, my main job responsibilities are, are making sure that the daily operations of the tasting room are, are up to date and up to par. So I create the scheduling. Um, I work with the team to ensure that they are all, you know, operating at their full potential. Um, and then I kind of just plug into whatever is needed. So there's days where I might be pouring wine or there's days where I might be, you know, polishing glasses. Yeah, you jump in wherever, mm -hmm. wherever exactly. is needed. Um, you touched on like all the roles that are mm -hmm. um, featured here in the tasting room. And I think it's important to mention that T Tolosa Tasting Room does really kind of operate on another level, almost more similar to a restaurant. And um, you have those support roles of the concierge um, when you call to make your appointment or 
um, you have the greeters, the hostesses out front. So you're welcomed with a smile. They help you find your table. And then we have the barbacks, which I've seen have been um, so helpful and making really the tasting of their run. It's like the, mm -hmm. the oil to the, to the machine for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, if you're just turning in, I just want to um, give you a little update. We are opening the tasting room here at Telosa and that's what we're covering this technical Thursday. We're going to be covering all those updates. And so I know for a fact, Jenny, that you've put a lot of thought into <laughs> how to open the tasting room. Yes. Um, there's been a lot of requirements and guidelines. Mm -hmm. And why don't you talk a little bit about the foundation, um, the logistics, some of the things you've, you've had to implement in order to, to reopen. Okay. Um, as Colette mentioned, there have been a lot of state requirements um, from the state, from the county, um, and then also, you know, just general guidelines that we are trying to follow um, that have been put out by the Wine Institute as well. Um, the biggest challenges and changes that you'll see when coming here is that we are operating uh, very strictly on an appointment only basis. Um, that's to ensure that, you know, proper social distancing is being followed and also to allow for our team to make sure that our entire winery is sanitized um, between every single group. Um, also, in order for the tasting room to be open for, this is like technical language, but and for on-site consumption, yeah. there must be a full sit-down meal uh, provided and the food and the wine must be purchased together on the same ticket. Um, Tolosa, we, we don't have a kitchen and we don't have a restaurant, but we're lucky that in the stipulations it says that you can bring on food trucks. Um, so that is what we have chosen to do, is to bring food trucks in uh, on a weekend basis. Um, so we're operating on Saturdays and Sundays only in this new regard that we're talking about, um, but it's still really fun. We've changed around the entire layout of the outdoor space. Um, so that there is proper distancing and we have made sure that we're wiping down every single table and chair there possibly could be um, in between each of the services. All right, so it sounds like you put a lot of thought into how to safely reopen the tasting room. Mm -hmm. um, everything is taking place outdoors on the patio and terrace. Um, we have a great layout where the tables are at least six feet apart, um, six feet apart or more. Right. Um, and that by appointment really helps to um, give you and the team the time to flip and sanitize everything. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned the food. We're going to talk about that more mm -hmm. in a moment. So why don't you walk us through the winery experience, the current winery mm -hmm. experience. You mentioned the appointments. Right. So why, um, why don't you talk about how, how we make an appointment and what those appointments look like? Perfect. So um, we have decided that we're going to do three seatings a day, one at 11 o'clock, one at 1.30, and one at 4 o'clock. So you can uh, call the concierge or email us and request an appointment time um, so that we do not move around tables and chairs uh, in between each seatings or we are operating with being parties of eight or less currently um, as large groups are just not really available currently. Um, we are also operating with 90 minutes for each appointment time. Um, which gives you ample amount of time to enjoy your glass of wine or your bottle of wine that you split with your team because we're still not doing tastings quite yet. Um, but it gives you time to really enjoy this outdoor space um, and then gives us time to sanitize the entire winery in between each group. Great. So once we have an appointment and it's our, our time to come to the winery and experience mm -hmm. the winery, what does it look like when we arrive at the winery? Right. So when you do make your appointment, you'll be sent a confirmation email. In that email, there is a phone number provided. We are asking that when you do arrive at the winery, you stay in your car and then text that phone number that's been provided. Uh, that is texting the greeter team out front to let you know that you're here and your entire party is here because we cannot seat you until your entire party arrives. Um, but we will then text message you to say, your table's ready, come on up. Um, so that we don't have a long line of guests standing at the front door. Um, but we do have everything marked out mm -hmm. in the event that there is a little bit of a line. Um, yes, you have the, the markers on the front walkway um, promoting the social distancing. 
um, they're throughout the winery, they're yeah. in the hallways. Um, so we're mm -hmm. really, um, really showing how to safely uh, move around the winery with all the other patrons. Right, exactly. But yeah, when you approach the greeter stand, we do ask that you have your mask on the entire time that you're here on the property, other than when you're seated at your table, because um, you can't eat or drink <laughs> with masks on. We tried. Um, but we do still ask that you wear them when you're in our community spaces. Um, but once you're all checked in, then your greeter will take you to your table. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So all the tables, again, are outside on the patio and terrace. They're at least six feet apart. Um, and once you're at your table, how do you order your food? Um, we've thought long and hard about this, but we think we figured out the best method or easiest method um, for everybody. Is it your um a state host is also doubling kind of as your server a little bit so they'll give you the food menu they'll also give you your wine menu um at the top of your food menu you'll notice the little space that has a place for your name and your phone number um but the your estate host will kind of explain everything give you a rundown of the food and then once you're ready to order your estate host will take your food mm. menu to the food truck okay. Um, yeah, once you're sitting at your table, it's really quite relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, you have that five-star hospitality and service yeah. definitely thought out. Um, very minimal uh, opportunities where you have to get up from the table. You can right. really just enjoy the, the beautiful outdoors. And I must say, it is beautiful out here. It's a beautiful day it's in the so Edinburgh nice. Valley. We have that Pacific wind kind of gusting through, and um, it's really relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Great. So you mentioned the food portion. Mm -hmm. Why don't you talk a little bit about what's available um, for wine service mm -hmm. um, and how, how to order the wine? Yeah. So we put together a list that could potentially evolve, um, but there's a list of wines available for by the glass consumption, but we also have our entire lineup available um, for by the bottle, which is what I always suggest because you always want a little bit more than one glass at least. Um, rosé was extremely popular mm, it is rose um, season. and it's the season so you just order your wine through your estate hosts and they will grab it for you bring you your glassware and um, you just get to relax and um, when your food is ready the food truck will text you to say your food is ready and then we ask that one person from your party goes up to collect uh, your meal Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of remind folks that in order for the tasting room to reopen at this time, um, the state is requiring um, a sit down a full meal per individual in order to enjoy wine on premise. And so we have that dialed in by partnering with local gourmet food trucks. Um, and we have that, that those gourmet food trucks kind of changing out every, every weekend and sometimes daily. So featuring um, two mm -hmm. a weekend. Um, and then when it comes to the wine, rosé is a great choice, but as we specialize in Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and again, just wine by the glass and bottle purchases at this time, we hope to be doing tastings eventually and hopefully mm -hmm. soon, but currently we are not conducting wine tastings. Correct. And then something that our wine club members are probably curious about is the heritage room, which is reserved for wine club members. It is currently closed. Um, we hope to reopen it soon, but for the time being, all of the experiences here at the winery are taking place outdoors on the beautiful patio and terrace. Yeah. All right, well, you covered what the kind of current winery experience looks like on the weekends, mm -hmm. um, Saturdays and Sundays. What does mm -hmm. it look like Monday through Friday? Uh, so Monday through Friday, um, we are not offering any tastings or any wine by the glass at the moment because the food component is still involved. But we've had our tasting room set up kind of looking like a wine shop mm. almost. When you walk in, you'll see our entire lineup on the bar um, and there is an estate host there to greet you and help you with any wine purchases you may need. Um, if you're a wine club member, you can come in and pick up your uh, March shipment. The June shipments aren't quite ready yet. But almost. But almost. <laughs> um, but you can come in and pick it up. We are still doing no touch pickup, if you will. So when you do come in to purchase a bottle, um, you know, you just grab it off of the bar so that we have as little uh, interaction as possible in terms of touching things. Wonderful. And then what about, um, what kind of offering do you have for folks who aren't quite ready to be out and about? Are you still offering complimentary wine service? Yeah. Or so delivery. Yeah. So <laughs> wine service. I yeah. like it. Complimentary. I'll take it. Um, but we are still offering on Mondays um, to, if you want to place an order at any time over the week, 
um, of three bottles or more and you live within 30 miles of the winery, um, one of those barbacks that we talked about earlier will come and deliver it to your home or to your office um, and just drop it off, check your ID, make sure that you're over the age of 21. Um, but then that way you can get your Tolosa wine without having to wait too long for it. Okay, so you've covered the experience. I'm sure a lot of folks wanna know, um, how are you kind of taking in the information and making these decisions and implementing kind of all of these protocols and guidelines? It's one day at a time. Definitely. <laughs> um, as I think we all, know and have learned in the past few months is that information comes really quickly. Um, things can change very quickly and what made sense three days ago might not make sense today. Um, so we are taking it one day at a time um, and just trying to make sure that when our guests do come here that they are as comfortable as possible. Um, when my team is here that they're as comfortable as possible. Um, and it's as safe and enjoyable environment as possible. Yes, the health and safety of the employees and, and customers are the number one priority. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to revisit any of this information that we're giving you today, it is on our website under visit. And we explain all of the uh, protocols and guidelines that we are taking to, to meet those health and safety standards. Um, Jenny, I want to applaud you because <laughs> I know for a fact that we, you and the team has been forward thinking and really looking at the information as it's released every day on when we can reopen, what's it going to look like. And when they made the announcement at 2 p.m. last Wednesday, we were able to pull mm -hmm. um, it together to reopen, uh, have a soft reopening on mm -hmm. Memorial Day weekend. And now we're excited to announce to everyone that we are open Saturdays and Sundays mm -hmm. by appointment. And um, yeah, so very exciting. It's very exciting stuff. So if you would like to make an appointment, um, you know, because we are, are accepting them on a little bit lesser and a little bit different level than what we were doing beforehand, uh, try and make it as far out as possible because um, the seating times are filling up. Um, you can call us at 805-782-0500 or email concierge at concierge at tolosawinery.com to start setting up an appointment. Wonderful. Well, Jenny, I want to thank you for your time and all of your yeah, insight today. And I want to thank you all for tuning in today for Technical mm -hmm. Thursday, not just today, but for our virtual experience series. We are wrapping up the series today with this Technical Thursday, but stay tuned. We will have some more experiences coming out this summer as we uh, roll out some on-site winery events and we get closer to harvest. So definitely stay tuned for that. For the meantime, we want to cheers you all and we cheers. wish you a happy Thursday. Ew, that's good. <laughs>